Hi guys. Till now we have discussed what trigonometry is, what trigonometric ratios are and why are they used and we also saw the values of these trigonometric ratios on some specific angles. So we saw a table similar to this one that we see here in the previous video. Now I would like to fill this up with your help. Do we guys remember the values for sine A when A took these values of 0, 30 degree, 45 degree, 60 degree and 90 degree. So what was sine for 0 degrees? Sine of 0 degrees was 0, correct. Then sine 30 degree was 1 by 2. Sine 45 degree was 1 by root 2. And sine 60 degree was root 3 by 2. And sine 90 degree was 1. Yes, and we fill out the values of cos A when A takes all these values. Let's see. If you remember, I said that the value of cos 0 is equal to the value of sine 90, and hence cos 0 would be 1. Then cos 30 degree would be same as this value, sine 60 degree. This will be root 3 by 2. Cos 45 degrees was 1 by root 2. And cos 60 degrees was equal to sin 30 degrees. That was 1 by 2. And finally, cos 90 degree was 0. Now, once we have sin A and cos A, we can find out the value of tan A. Yes, because tan A was sin A by cos A. And hence, this row would be nothing but the ratio of the first row and the second row. So let's fill it up. Tan 0 degree was 0 by 1 or 0. Tan 30 degree would be 1 by root 3. Just divide the first row value upon the second row value. 1 by root 3. Third would be 1 because 1 by root 2 by 1 by root 2 becomes 1. And here tan 60 degree is root 3 and finally tan 90 degrees will not be defined because anything divided by 0 is not defined. Let's go to cot. So cot 0 degrees would be cos 0 degree upon sin 0 degree. So it is the ratio of second row by the first row. So 1 by 0 will be not defined because anything by 0 is not defined. Similarly, cot 30 degrees would be root 3 by 2 upon 1 by 2. That is root 3. Then cot of 45 degrees would be 1 by root 2 by 1 by root 2. That would be 1 again. Then cot 60 degrees would be 1 by 2 over root 3 by 2. That becomes 1 by root 3. And finally, cot 90 degrees would be 0 by 1 or 0. We can notice that even tan of A and cot of A follows the same trend that sin and cos followed. So tan 0 is same as cot 90 degree and tan 90 degree is same as cot 0 degree. So it's again diametrically opposite. Now let's fill out the values for secant. Now secant of 0 degrees would be 1 by cos 0 degrees. That is 1 again. Here it would be 2 by root 3. Just the inverse of what we had for cos. Correct? So secant of 45 degrees is 1 by secant of cos 45 degrees. That gives me root 2 here. It would be 2 for 60 degrees and 1 by 0 or not defined for 90 degrees. So secant of 90 degrees is not defined. And cosec A would be inverse of sin A. So cosec for 0 degrees would be 1 by 0 or not defined. That for 30 degrees is cosec 30 would be 2. Cosec 45 degrees would be root 2. Cosec 60 degrees would be 2 by root 3. 
and finally cosec 90 degrees would be 1. So this is the table and you can see that it's pretty easy to get it only if we know the values of sin A for these angles. Now let's look at a few examples where we can use these values or these values would be of help for us. Suppose we are given a task of erecting a pole which is 5 meters in length such that it has to be supported by a wire which forms an angle of 30 degrees with the ground. Let me draw a figure for you. So let's say this is one pole which is 5 meters in length and it has to be supported by a wire which is tied at the top of the pole and the other end of that wire is tied to the ground by a hook. Here, here's the hook. So the wire goes from here till the top and it forms an angle of 30 degree. So let's say this black one is the wire and it forms an angle of 30 degrees from the ground. Now what would be the length of the wire that is required? So we are supposed to find out this length. Now if we look at it carefully, this pole is perpendicular to the ground and it forms a right angle triangle. Let's give it some name. Let's call it A, B, C as always. So angle B is 90 degrees. We know that this angle, angle C is the angle which the wire forms with the ground and it's given as 30 degrees and we are supposed to find out the length of AC. We know the length of the pole that is 5 meters. Now let's see how do we find this length. AC is the longest side and it is also opposite to the right angle. Hence AC is nothing but the hypotenuse and this one is the side AB and is opposite to the angle that we are considering the 30 degree angle. So what is the ratio that we use when we have opposite side and the hypotenuse? Yes, it's sine. So sine of angle C would be the opposite side upon the hypotenuse. Now here if we look carefully, angle C is given as 30 degrees. So sine of 30 degrees can be written as opposite side AB by AC that is the hypotenuse. We know the length of AB, we know the value of sin 30. So we can find out the value of AC. From the table above we remember that sin 30 degree is 1 by 2. Length of AB is 5 meters and AC we don't know. So this gives us AC equal to 5 meters into 2 just by cross multiplying. So we would have AC as 10 meters. So this is the answer. So length of the wire that is required is 10 meters. Now this was an example where the angle was given to us and we had to find out one of the sides. But let's look at another example where the sides are given to us and we are supposed to find out the angle. There is a triangle, triangle PQR where angle Q is the right angle. So angle Q is 90 degrees. Let's draw it. So this is triangle P, Q and R. This is 90 degrees and we are given that PQ is 3 centimeters and QR is 3 root 3 centimeters. So these are the lengths that are given to us in this triangle. We are supposed to find out the measure of angle P and the measure of angle R. So we are given this as 3 units. This is 3 root 3 centimeters. If we are considering angle P then the opposite side is 3 root 3 centimeters and the adjacent side is 3 centimeters. 
so tan of angle p and cot of angle p would involve the perpendicular and the base and not the hypotenuse so tan of angle p would be the opposite side upon the adjacent side while cot of angle p would be the reverse it would be the adjacent side by the opposite side so let's just consider tan p for now so if we calculate tan p it would be opposite that is qr by pq so length of qr is 3 root 3 cm and pq is 3 cm so tan p becomes root 3 do you remember for what value of angle p was tan p root 3 yes it was 60 degrees so angle p is nothing but 60 degrees now it's very simple to find out r r would be 180 degrees minus 90 minus 60 that is 180 degrees minus 150 or r would be 30 degrees we could have also found r by using the same method that we used to find out angle p so let's talk about tan of angle r so tan of angle r would be opposite that is pq by the adjacent side that is qr and hence tan of angle r would become 1 by root 3 and we know that this value comes for 30 degrees so when r is 30 degrees we would get tan r as 1 by root 3 and is the same answer that we got from the previous method now let's look at a question from the ncert book it's given that tan of a plus b is equal to root 3 while tan of a minus b is equal to 1 by root 3 it is also given that a plus b lies between 0 degrees and 90 degrees and we are supposed to find out what are the values of a and b and b are two angles such that the value of tan of a plus b is root 3 and the value of tan of a minus b is 1 by root 3 now this one is fairly simple to solve let's remember what was the table for tan of a so tan of 0 degrees was 0 tan of 30 degrees was 1 by root 3 tan 45 degrees was 1 tan 60 degrees was root 3 and tan 90 degree was not defined so we see that tan of 60 degrees is root 3 and it is also given that tan of a plus b is root 3 and a plus b lies between 0 and 90 degrees and hence a plus b would be nothing but 60 degrees also we see that tan of 30 degrees is 1 by root 3 and tan of a minus b is 1 by root 3 so a minus b would be 30 degrees now we have two equations in two variables and it's pretty simple to solve so when we add these two equations we get 2a b and b gets cancelled is equal to 60 degree plus 30 degree or 90 degrees and hence a becomes 45 degrees so when a is 45 degrees and a minus b is 30 degrees we would have 45 degrees minus b is equal to 30 degrees which implies b is equal to 45 degree minus 30 degree or angle b is 15 degrees so we have the values of angle a that is 45 degrees and angle b that is 15 degrees I hope we are clear about what the values of these ratios would be for these particular five angles. We'll talk of a few trigonometric identities in the next video. See you bye.